Okay, so now we've connected to the Redis database, we can now start using this client object right here to either add data to Redis or delete data from Redis or get data from Redis. Now to begin with, I'm gonna be adding data by using this create component right here. And inside this component, we've got a form asking for a new book, including the title of the book, the author, the rating, and a blurb about the book. And when we submit this form, we're firing a local action called handle submit inside this component. Now, inside that function, we take the form data, which is automatically taken in from the form when we use the action. And then we call the create book serve action from here. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way and not calling the server action directly from the form is so that the server action can return an error to this component inside this function right here if there is one later on. And then we can store that error in this result and update the error state if there is one so we can output it in the form. Anyway, this server action is called create book and it's been imported at the top of the file. So I made the action inside its own file in the actions folder right here. And at the moment, it's just a simple function which takes in the form data. And we grab those values from the form data using the object dot from entries method and passing in the form data. This allows us to destructure all those input values like so. And these are the values we want to save now to Redis. I've also already imported two things we need for this action. The client object that we created and exported from the db.js file inside the lib folder and the redirect function from next forward slash navigation. So then let's think about how we want to store this in Redis. Now it makes sense to me to store this book as a hash because we're going to have several bits of information about it. So we'll store it as a hash, but we also need to think about the key for the hash as well. We can't just use book as the key, something really generic like that, because we're ultimately going to have more than one book stored in Redis. So it should be books, the resource name, then a colon, and then maybe some ID for that book. So we need to do two things then inside this function. First, create a unique ID for the book as part of the key, and then create a hash at that key for the book. Now for the ID, you're probably best using some third party library to generate them. But for now, I'm just gonna use the math object to generate one instead. Now there is a tiny chance that this will create duplicate IDs, but that chance is gonna be really slim considering we're just gonna be adding a handful of books. So for this tutorial, it's gonna work fine, hopefully. So the way we're gonna do this is by saying const ID is equal to the math object dot floor to floor the results of what we're about to do. Then we'll take a random number. Oops, it should be math.random. And that's gonna be a random number between zero and one. And then we times it by a very large number. So we'll just times it by 100,000. And that basically gets us an integer between zero and 100,000. So that's gonna be the random ID that we give to a book. Like I said, there's a very, very small chance we're gonna get a duplicate. So I wouldn't use this in production. However, for our tutorial, it's gonna be fine. So we have the ID, and then after that, we want to save that hash to Redis. So to do that, we can say await because this is an asynchronous function right here. So await client, which is what we imported. Remember, I said all the different methods that we want to use to interact with Redis are going to be on this client object. And we want to save a hash. So H, first of all, camel case set to H set. And that matches the command, which is H set, right? So inside here, we can pass through, first of all, the key for the book. Now, I'm gonna use template strings because I wanna output this variable right here, the ID. So it's gonna be books, first of all, then a colon, oops, not capitals, books, colon, and then dollar sign curly braces to output the ID as well. So books, colon one or two or whatever the random number is. So that's the first argument. The second argument is gonna be an object which represents the hash. So we're going to have four properties, title, rating, author, and blurb, right? So we can say title is the title. Now, because they're named the same, we can reduce that to just title, and that works. We can do the same for rating. We can do the same for author. And then finally, for blurb as well. So this is going to reach out to Redis, and it's going to inject that book for us as a hash. Finally, I want to redirect the user to the home page once it's done, because eventually we're gonna list all the books on that page. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is head over to Redis first of all, and delete any data that we currently have. 
So we're starting with a blank slate. Then we're going to go to our web application and we're going to try adding a new book. Okay, so inside Redis Insight, we can see the only data we have currently is books and a colon then two. So I'm just going to delete that. And now we have no data whatsoever inside Redis. So now let's try adding a new book. So click on add a book and then we'll say name of the wind. Patrick Rothfuss is the author. The rating is going to be nine. Blah, blah, blah for the blurb. I'm going to add this book and see what happens. Hopefully it's going to add it to Redis and then redirect us back to the homepage. So it does that. If we bring Redis back over here and refresh on the data, yep, we can see now we get books and then this random ID right here. And if we click on that, we can see the title is Name of the Wind, Rating 9, Author Patrick Rothfuss, and Blurb, blah, blah, blah. Awesome. So that is working. I'm going to try adding one more. And that's going to be the final empire. The author is Brandon Sanderson. I feel like the King Killer Chronicle should just go to Brandon Sanderson at the minute so he can finish it because it doesn't look like Rothfuss is going to anytime soon. That's going to be nine, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to add the book. And hopefully, fingers crossed, that's going to work. If we go back over here, we're going to go back. And then if I refresh this data, yep, we see another book record right here with a different ID. And when we click on that, we see all the different fields and values. Awesome. So now we're using that Redis node client inside our next JS application to interact with Redis and add new data to Redis.